Good afternoon. Um, I want to thank Professor Cooks and Professor Ouyang for inviting me here to exchange our working experience and some innovation idea on the miniaturization of mass spectrometer. Some people may uh, knew me as a Shimatsu research, <laughs> researcher. Um, I, I do come from uh, Manchester um, SRL, but uh, Shimatsu research. But this time I am here to represent Kuensan Hershing Mass Spectrometer Company, which is one of the few uh, mass spectrometer company in China um, which can produce mass spectrometer. Um, although uh, th the reason is uh, uh, because uh, Hershing founded this uh, research project, although most of the, uh, some of the core, core technology is um, provided by Shimatsu. Um, so Hershing, uh, as I said, is one of the few mass spectrometer. Basically, in Hershing, we make uh, the aerosol TOF instrument. Um, at the same time, we also make um, this online monitor for VOC or production gas, pr production line gas. Um, so this, you know, the, the VOC and the other uh, environmental problem is very severe in China. Um, so there are large demand, demand for such kind of instrumentation. So because of that, Hershing uh, has contract to Shimatsu Research Laboratory in Shanghai to develop portable mass spectrometer for VOC detection. Uh, mainly, uh, this instrument will base on our digital ion trap um, technology. Um, there are already lots of uh, miniaturized mass spectrometer. Some are already on the market, some uh, nearly on the market. And today you have already here several um, such reports. Um, I just copied from relevant, uh, relevant website. So you can see at least bigger part of them are based on iron trap, although also using miniaturized quadruple um, for GCMS type and LCMS type, but still most of selection, most of the <laughs> selection is using Eintrap um, because this is the last talk, so I almost no need to say too much about Eintrap, why people choose Eintrap for miniaturization because it's small and need lower vacu degree of vacuum and uh, less requirement of the mechanical precision and also it still deliver, deliver the very high sensitivity because the iron trap can store the iron for a period of time. Then after we eject the iron, we suddenly see lots of signal. Um, so this can overwhelm the, all the electronic noise. Um, then what kind of iron trap uh, should we select? Um, basically, Almost all kind of a quadruple ion trap can be used, and they are all small and all has such benefit. Um, but along history, people has developed different options, especially from the um, cylindrical ion trap um, massively uh, simplified the, uh, the mechanic machining. So make it easy to, to, to be produced and make it also small. Um, rectilinear ion trap is another option, simplified the linear quadruple ion trap. Um, so the linear quadruple ion trap has, a, as um, previous Professor Austin already said, uh, the capacity of trap is a big issue. Um, so the linear ion trap uh, increase uh, trapping air trapping space um, uh, uh, and also 
the other just you just see, uh, heard for, heard from uh, Professor Austin, this uh, raw trap is another alternative to expand the trapping area. Um, but these simplification also um, um, has a re require also the higher accuracy still needed. Um, also, we need to play with the, uh, the field. Apart from quadruple field, you, you always have high order field. Um, so th this we have used the idea developed by Professor Tran Van Ding, Fudan University, um, using PCB ion trap. It, PCB ion trap form uh, also kind of a 2D, 2D quadruple field. Uh, the idea is using several uh, p printed circuit strip to form this field. The structure uh, of forming this uh, method is similar to, um, is somehow coincident with um, Professor Austin's uh, method. But the main emphasis of PCB ion trap is we can, using different electrode to make different kind of contribution of high order field. Um, for, this, for example, there are central, central strip and the side strip. This field, this field is formed by the only side strip and this field formed by the central strip. By proper selection, the ratio of the voltage between the central strip and the side strip, we can form an uh, electric field very much similar to a quadruple field. Or additionally, we can form some compensation field to compensate the bad field uh, caused by the ejection slit. By this way, we can uh, also, we can also uh, using dipole, uh, di uh, the way, using similar way, we can generate the proper dipole field. This gives the opportunity that even the trap itself is not perfectly made. We can still, by using voltage divider device outside the vacuum, to adjust the post adjust the field to form the field to be favorite for ion ejection or for CID. So this gives such an advantage, gives us pro, uh, opportunity to build the iron trap reasonably cheap, yet still get a very high resolution. So the process, after we were introduced this uh, idea, we, we further developed in Shanghai uh, lab. Um, this is generally rough idea of the process. We can either using the, the, the silver paste process or the gold plate process to create uh, both sides of the ceramic, on the both sides of ceramic plate, the pattern. On, of course, on the back is for the connection, on the, on the inner, inner surface is for these, we form this strip for forming the electric field. And also, we, one of the key issues is creating these grooves on the surface to avoid surface charge. So, in the groove, so these grooves separate the two electrodes and also on the wall of the groove we have coated the metal so there is no, there is no surface charge uh, inference. And then we mounted by the two, uh, mounted these plates onto the two end, end cup electrode to form this little iron trap and also attached to the other part of the mass spectrometer. Also, we use the digital drive method. We hope this method also contribute to miniaturize the whole system. Um, just in case somebody not familiar with this technology, the, the iron trap is normally drive by the R, uh, LC circuit with a fixed frequency. We call this the RF resonator. With RF resonator, you generate fixed frequency, but amplitude can be can be very varied. Um, instead of using RF resonator, we use a pair of switch, switch between 
the high and the low voltage level to create such a square wave, or we call it digital waveform, using such waveform to drive the ion trap. So normally we don't change the voltage, but we can change the, the, the period. In other words, we scan the frequency instead of the amplitude. Initially, we think the advantage of such technology is to increase the mass range because for multi-generated ion, um, you cannot scan the voltage up and up. It finally will break down. So, but if you scan the frequency, there is no limit. Later, we also found some other advantage, such as uh, we can reduce the low mass cutoff in the, in the MSMS. These are all our past work. I don't want to spend too much time on this. Um, another advantage is, is we can use the asymmetric waveform to isolate ion without introducing another DC voltage. Uh, basically, is we trap the ion with a symmetric waveform. Then we change the waveform duty cycle to be different from 0.5. Then we create such a, a, a DC voltage. So some of the ion uh, with a higher mass or lower mass, they are unstable, so be ejected. And then we can uh, do a small scan. So this ion is isolated using such we call digital asymmetric waveform isolation. This can further simplify the circuit without additional DC voltage uh, supply. Through the year, we further developed this uh, we call high voltage, high frequency uh, switching drive to generate the drive waveform. Initially, we, we have to use such a big uh, MOSFET switch to drive uh, the ion trap. Now we reduce the size to such a small um, board. So still can deliver two phase antiphase of plus minus 250 volt. Uh, square wave, which is enough to scan the mass over two, uh, 3,000 Thompson. And the power, sub, power consumption is normally between 3 to 30 watt, depending on the mass to charge ratio where we scan to at. Um, okay, so Hershing uh, come to us. Uh, want the technology to develop the portable mass spectrometer. So there are different kind of applications I, I don't want to repeat. So the main purpose, main interest Hershey want is to, to develop a mass spectrometer which able to put on the mobile uh, vehicle or, any, or be, can be carried so we can go around and monitor the pollution um, which may be uh, mapping the pollution in the area um, close to certain um, uh, event or some uh, industry, uh, bad uh, pollution industry. Um, so to this aim, um, we set up a such target. Mass range to for the VOC, 20 to 800 is more than enough. Uh, I don't think we can really see much above 500. Mass resolution, 0.4 AMU, four with half maxima. Limit detection, 50 ppb. It's not such fantastic value, but for, for an instrument without um, pre-concentration, without GC, this is not uh, very easy. Um, of course, for monitor, direct monitoring, there are lots of uh, chemical noise, so MSN is something necessary. Power consumption, 80 to 150 watt for everything. Overall weight, 18 kilogram, including the gas cylinder for buffer gas, battery, tablet, computer, and this very heavy 3.5 kilogram Pelican military case. Um, so for this prototype, we just using uh, continual monitor mode without GC, and we use VUV photoionization. 
Why photoionization? Because we are monitor VOC. Uh, if we select proper lamp, for example, we select Krypton lamp with a uh, photo energy 10.6 EV, which is above most of the VOC ionization potential. So most of the VOC can be ionized. Also because uh, most of the inorganic compound has a higher ionization potential, therefore they don't contribute to the chemical noise. So we gener even without GC separation, we can still get reasonably clean spectrum. Now this is uh, our design structure. Um, so within one, uh, 18 kilogram, we have um, diaphragm pump, Pfeiffer diaphragm pump, and turbo, turbo pump, 11 liter per second. And this is a little trapping trap chamber, vacuum chamber, and vacuum gauge. This is the initial design. Now we change to a Pirani gauge, which is sufficient for our vacuum. And this is our high voltage, high frequency box. Um, the battery is underneath this PCB control board. Um, this other, there are also several power supply modules. And uh, this is just for a, a membrane, membrane heater uh, control. And this is cylinder, gas cylinder. So when this put into the bottom part of the box, we still have room to put backup battery. So the main battery can last this uh, machine to operate up to two to two and a half hours. If we use bat backup battery, the backup battery will start to feed the in internal battery. When the backup battery is used up, we have opportunity to unplug and replace without interrupt the operation. So that means this machine can work indefinite length of time if we keep sufficient backup uh, battery. Uh, we use a um, pad computer to control this unit. So everything is in it. So there's no, so far we haven't put GC. Uh, we use membrane sample inlet, photo ionization. Um, also static, uh, static uh, introduction lens. Um, so this is just to give a list of the all um, view, some, some view, view, view C we can monitor, but also a few of them we cannot, we cannot monitor. This is an illustration of internal structure. Um, sample is introduced through a stainless tube and a heater disc ceramic he heater disc is sandwiched by the, the tube and the heater block. Inside the heater block, the gas is meandering uh, around to get sufficient interaction with the uh, PDMS film, which is supported by this metal cell with uh, lots of holes on, on this surface. There's a hole on the top of the cell where the UV light can shoot in and the ion, uh, the ion will be extracted by the DC lens stack and introduced to the linear ion trap. So I don't show the detector here, but in the previous view, you can see the detector is on the side of the ion trap. So this picture shows the, the UV lamp in operation. We have done simulation to optimize the structure. We can see in the middle of the mass range, mass introdu uh, the intro ion introduced um, efficiency can be as high as 60%. It is not ideal, but uh, since this is a good ratio, so we think even this, this external ion source uh, is good enough. We don't have to use in internal ion source. Of course, if we use the internal ion source, we have opportunity to trap the ion 100%, but this is not too big difference. To reduce the buffer gas cylinder, the weight of cylinder, 
we adopt a method using relatively low pressure. We're using low pressure cylinder. And this structure is, a, this, this, this cylinder, uh, we can charge to 0.5 megapascal. It's only 50 cc. It lasts about 10 hour operation. Because we need to charge the battery, so we will go to station to charge this cylinder as well. Because we don't have this high pressure cylinder, which is very heavy, we don't have the pressure regulator, so we, we save lots of weight. So without pressure regulator, we directly regulate the gas pressure, buffer gas helium pressure inside the chamber. So the Pirani gauge measure the pressure and it feeds information back to the control to this pulse valve. So by, very, by modulate the width of the pulse valve, we can stabilize the pressure directly inside the chamber. So this is a geometry size of the trap, which is 40 millimeter long, um, the, both X and Y with the inscribed ra radius of five millimeter. So this whole device is only 20 gram. So we have two mass range, normal mass range from 20 to 300 Thompson. Uh, we only use plus minus 100 volt to save the energy, basically. So the frequency scan range from 0.44 to 2.1 megahertz. Of course, for several, uh, to some big mass, we can still use a higher voltage up to 250 volt, um, give them such higher mass. But uh, it's, normally, it's not really necessary. This show a picture of the real device. So we have built two prototypes. Uh, this is on the testing rig uh, before putting into the box. Um, this picture shows the software interface. Um, we're using ViewPad, uh, which can use, in, uh, can use uh, the, the, the Windows system, Windows 7 system, rather than the Android system or Apple system, um, it's easier to, to, to program. Um, we have, um, the central control system is also designed based on FPGA programmer, um, it, it, including 15 DAC and 10 ADC to control whole, every, every part. Of. Um, the view part, tablet computer, also contain Wi-Fi, which can send the information out to the hub. So this is our uh, initial um, result, showing the, diff uh, the, the diff two scan rate. This is at the scan rate of 8,000 Thompson per second, and this is 3,000 uh, Thompson per second. With a slightly slower scan rate, we get much better peak shape. Um, this is the mass resolution with 100 volt power supply uh, to drive uh, this trap. Scan at 5,000 Thompson per second, we get four with half maxima 0.29 Dalton. And this is at tolerance, tolerance 91 Thompson. So this is a test with 200 ppb xylem. So this is um, kind of a selected ion uh, current. So before, uh, before we uh, switch to the xylem uh, gas, this is the background. So there's very little peak in the background also at 106. At this time after inlet, we can see this peak is relatively high. But of course, without GC, we never get clean spectrum but this gives sufficient signal to noise ratio. Um, tandem mass, for example, this is a, a test with tandem mass. This is uh, xylem. Uh, we isolate this uh, peak. Then after CID, we get fragment peak. Um, this is zooming scan. In this experiment, of course, it's quite concentrated. We're using, uh, the, basically, we, 
we, we, we put 0.5 microliter xylene liquid into five mil um, bo bottle, then extract the, 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 the gas in the bottom of bottle. Uh, we extract about uh, with a syringe of 0.1 milliliter and uh, inject that part, which equivalent five microgram. Um, give very good uh, signal, MSMS. This is another MSMS result of mesium salicylate. Uh, basically, this is a mixture in experiment with just a mixture several uh, VOC, then isolate the parent ion and get fragment. Uh, this is to demonstrate uh, the, the isolation resolution. Initially, we have um, trichloral benzene. Um, you can see these peak within the lots of chemical noise. Then we apply this uh, uh, digital asymmetric waveform to generate certain DC to isolate these unwanted ion. Of course, this method doesn't give sufficient resolution. So all the isotope peak of trichloride benzene was included. Then we further do a forward and reverse scan to select any of the isotope. For example, in this example, we select 180 and exclude 182, 184, and so on. And in this case, we isolate 182 and exclude 180 and 184. Afterward, we can do a CID. Um, I don't think I have a good knowledge to explain why we lost 15 uh, Dalton, which is mesium here, which is beyond my knowledge to explain this. Okay, this, um, for future work, it's still ongoing to develop. Um, I think uh, the, the first detect idea using a sam sample enrich uh, enrichment is a very good idea to boost the sensitivity. Um, probably Hershing is going to try similar similar method or uh, we can also try to use a fast miniaturized GC to incorporate with mass spectrometer. Um, we also need to improve the database, um, also improve the software. Of course, there will be more engineering because so far we still, it still weighs 18 kilogram, and we also need to find proper uh, application field. Um, I have to thank you, all the team, uh, research team, in both Shimatsu Research Laboratory in Shanghai and Hershing, uh, Quinshan Hershing. Um, namely, I just uh, several Mu uh, Hui, Jiang Gongyu, Meng Xiaoyu, and this is. Electronic engineer Ling and uh, mechanical engineer Zhang. Um, yes, this so far is maybe no problem for the strong man, but for the girl, is 18 kilograms is still quite heavy unless she's Lara Croft. <laughs> okay, thank you for your attention. The question is the, the pressure in the ionization area. Um, the, the pressure of the ionization area we cannot measure, but, but it is with a lot, quite large conductance to the ion trap area. So the, in the ion trap area, we stabilize the pressure to 10 to minus uh, one, t uh, five, 10 to minus two pascal. 10 to minus 2 pascal. And um, um, so in the ionization area, could be a half order magnitude higher. Uh, we do see dimer if we introduce too many samples. Too many, how much? 
I think it depends which, for example, for uh, for, uh, for, uh, for uh, tolerin, uh, if we or like uh, acetin, if we uh, if we. Well, I, I can't really know the PPM. Uh, if we sometimes just bring the solvent near the inlet, we do see that. Okay. We do see that, but I, I don't know. It's it's more than you can you can smell. Okay. Yeah. So more than uh, than PPM. Maybe so yeah. So I got one question. Can you comment on the material you use for the PCB trap and the how stable they are after a long time in the RF RF heating? Um, the the material. Uh, the question is about the the material for the PCB. Um, the material of PCB previously in Tranfan's laboratory, he used just PR4 normally for the electronics um, board. We tend to using the cronium um, ceramic. Um, this, uh, we believe, is much more stable. And we have two ways of metallization. One is uh, uh, silver paste. The other way is gold plating. In both ways, we don't see any decay. <laughs> of course, this is, uh, we haven't put such a long-term use, but we never see this trap was uh, gradually decay, unless we put too high voltage and simply just damaged it in the discharge. Sorry. Yes, and the, all the data here presented here is by VUV ionization. Yeah, what, what is the question at uh, first? Uh, the question is, uh, what is the difference between the first generation and the second generation of uh, high voltage square wave generator? Uh, I think mainly uh, is the, the device which we, we used. Also, the MOSFET, but the different. Of course, I'm not able to tell you which type. <laughs> well, uh, if we don't have any more questions, let's thank all of our speakers again. So. Well, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you all being here.